Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is the King. Well, we give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for the privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. Yes, we do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles. Glory to God. Make sure you have a pen and a highlighter and something to take notes with. We call this Healing School. If you're a regular follower of this broadcast, you know that we study the subject of faith, divine healing, and health. We have to study faith because, as I said in the past, faith is how you activate that healing anointing. It's how you tap into the healing power of God. Praise God. And we study about the ministry of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we'll also get into the book of Acts. We want to see the healing ministry of Jesus, the apostles, the workings of the Holy Spirit. We want to be more effective members of the body of Christ. When we first began talking about the subject of divine healing and health, we began by finding out that healing is the will of God for you and me. In other words, we wanted to get ourselves well, and so we had to study the text, study the scripture, find out what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross of Calvary, and then we begin to learn how to appropriate the promises of God. In other words, we wanted what happened at the cross of Calvary to become a reality in our lives. And to do that, you have to be a student of the word and a doer of the word. The Bible says it's the doers of the word that are blessed in their deeds. See, so we learn how to appropriate the promises of God. After we learned that, we spent a lot of time doing that, several months. After we were done that, we began to say, okay, so now that I'm well, and I learned how to keep my body well, how do I help other people now? Because remember, we are members of the body of Christ. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. We taught that last week and the week before. He's the head of the church. He said, you go into all the world and you preach the gospel to every creature. See, that's our job. That's our mission. It's called the Great Commission. He said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And so as believers, there ought to be some signs following us. And as I stated last week, the signs and wonders or the confirmation of the gospel are advertisement for the kingdom. It's how God gets people's attention, see? And once those miracle signs and wonders are performed, it's our job to point people to Jesus. You remember the Apostle Peter and John on, the, on the, uh, after the day of Pentecost? I believe it's chapter 3 in the book of Acts. There was a man that was lame. Uh, he was set at the gate called Beautiful every day to ask alms of the people. He asked Peter and John for some money one day. The Apostle Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. What did he have? The name of Jesus and faith in the name. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's the same thing that Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark 16. I just quoted it to you. In my name. See? So we, we, we lay hands on the sick. We get them to recover. But after that great miracle, the Bible says, Peter had to look at the other people and say, well, you men and women, why are you looking on us as though by our own power? Or holiness we made this man to walk he said no it was the name of Jesus verse 16 chapter 3 through faith in his name that made him whole and then the Bible says that day 3,000 souls were added to the church glory to God see so my point is the sign the wonder the miracle it led people to Jesus it got people's attention see that's what they are signs and wonders are advertisement for the kingdom that's why Jesus told the disciples when you go and preach first thing he said is tell them the kingdom of God is at hand glory to God the kingdom's here and the signs and wonders verify or validate or confirm the fact that Jesus is Lord praise God Father we thank you 
Oh, we give you praise for this time of study that we have today. Oh, Father, your word says that you're not willing that any should perish. You want all men to come to repentance. You want all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. You said in the last days that you want to reap the precious fruit of the earth. All those precious souls on every continent on the face of the earth. All nations, all ethnic backgrounds. Oh, Father, you want them saved. That's why you gave your son Jesus. And as disciples of Christ, we come to study the word. We want to know more. We want to know how to move with you, how to flow in the compassion of Christ, how to flow in the Holy Ghost, how to minister the word, how to minister your healing touch to the masses, Lord. For signs and wonders are advertisement for your kingdom. Lord, grant us utterance today to speak your word boldly as we ought to speak it. Confirm your word with signs following in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God forevermore. When you get time, you read the book of Acts chapter 4. That's a backup to what I just said about the signs and wonders and Peter and John at the gate called beautiful. You remember those, those uh, Sanhedrin, the chief priests called them in, began to reprimand and reprove them and rebuke them for teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said they went back to their own company and they called upon the name of the Lord, began to pray. That's what they prayed for. They said, Lord, grant us utterance to speak your word boldly. Stretch forth your hand and allow signs and wonders to be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. The Bible says the place was shaken. Oh, dear God. Good stuff. All right, go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. While you're looking for that, make sure you have your pen and your highlighter. Make sure you have something to write with and take notes. I'm going to give you some revelation today. While you're doing that, say this with me. The Lord is my primary care physician. The Lord is my health care provider. And the Lord's word is my medicine. Glory to God. And please don't forget our foundational text, Matthew 8, 16 and 17. 1 Peter 2, 24, and Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Those are our foundational texts when it comes to the subject of divine healing and health. Please read them at least once a day. Mark them in your Bibles. Highlight them. Think about them. Meditate on them. Save them out of your mouth. Share them with people. Tweet them. Put them on Facebook. Let them become a part of your inner consciousness because that's where the power is. Once those verses dawn on your reborn spirit, they will begin to dominate your life. They'll become a reality to you. Because faith is a lifestyle. The things of God are given to you and are given to me in seed form. Everything God gives you is in seed form. We're born again of incorruptible seed first peter chapter two uh ver chapter one verse 23 so that seed is planted in you love is in there joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance it's in there praise god but we have to learn to walk it out or as the apostle paul says work out your salvation get what's on the inside to come out see and that takes work See, it's a process. You grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the more you meditate on that which is written, and the more you meditate on that which is said, as someone like myself will say or speak under the anointing and inspiration of the Spirit of God, it will become real to you. The more you say it. Have you ever heard anybody say this? Man, that guy tells so many lies, I think he believes them. <laughs> he begins to believe them. You just start believing that stuff. You keep saying, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases. Surely he has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. You keep saying it and saying it and saying it. The Lord's my primary care physician. The Lord's my health care provider. The Lord's word is my medicine. You keep saying it and saying it and saying it. All of a sudden... Faith comes, and deep in your heart, in the deepest recesses of your being, you believe it. <laughs> and Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Not in his head, in his heart. You got to get by whose stripes ye were healed from the pages past your head and into your heart. It has to go through this process. And Jesus said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, you get to a point where it builds in you. And the day is going to come that when you say it, oh, God, it'll be like God saying, let there be light. <laughs> Can you see that? I'm telling you, this stuff works. Amen. When you work it. See, now when you first begin to say, by Jesus stripes I'm healed and the Lord's my health care provider and the Lord's word is my medicine, the Lord's my health care provider. And you begin to quote these healing texts in the beginning, it's going to seem far fetched. It's going to seem like you're lying. It's going to seem like, huh? <laughs> but one day it's going to dawn on your spirit and you're going to know that you know that you know by Jesus stripes you're healed. Are you listening to me? Amen. All right. You found the gospel of Luke. Look at chapter eight. We're studying our fourth case. This one happens to be the man with an unclean spirit. We find this in the gospel of Matthew chapter eight. Believe, I believe it begins at verse 26, 28. It's also found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, and now we're going to read it here in the Gospel of Luke. As I stated last week, we're just going to stick with Luke unless the Lord leads us to go back. Because that was a lot of reading we did last week. So we're just going to stick with Dr. Luke's account of it. But we want to make sure that we pay attention to detail, that we extract from it all that the Spirit of God would have us to extract. Because we're getting ready to go to another level. Have you noticed? over the weeks, over the months, that this thing is building. It's almost like going to school and learning arithmetic. It's addition, then it's subtraction, multiplication, then it's division. It's a little bit more. Fractions, decimals, percents. Then you got geometry, algebra, calculus, trigonometry. It just keeps building, right? And that's what we're learning. We started out with the man full of leprosy. And then we went on and got into centurion servant. Then we went on and started studying Peter's mother-in-law. And we keep learning about rebuking demons and demon spirits in the name of Jesus. We're members of the body of Christ. I mean, we just keep on learning. Glory to God. And now we're getting to deal with demon possession. You're going to find out that a large number of cases when it comes to sickness and disease is going to be demonic. Some of it, sickness and disease, is hereditary. There are some things that uh, you get just through family genes and your family line. There's other things we get just by being foolish, like going outside without your coat on while you're sweating and your wife told you not to do it. There's a whole lot of other ways people get sick, all kinds of ways. People can sin and open up doors of sickness and disease. But today, we're going to continue talking about demon possession. See? Because demons cause sickness and disease now that does not mean that every time somebody's sick that a demon did it this particular case it does but it doesn't always mean that and this is why it's so important for us to study we want to know the truth we want to know uh, how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost when a demon spirit is present and how to deal with him and who better to teach us than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So as disciples of Christ, let's dig into the word. Look at verse 26. They sailed to the region of the Gadarenes or the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had worn no clothes. He lived not in the house, but he lived in the tombs or a cemetery. That lets you know right there that something is wrong. Living in abandoned buildings. You ever see people that have to live in park benches and live in just some, some crazy places. That lets you know something's wrong. Okay, something is terribly wrong. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice. He's screaming at Jesus. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. He's screaming at him. 
For Jesus had commanded the, the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it or the demon had seized him, and though he was, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broke his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. As I, as I mentioned last week, let me just touch on it a little bit more today. Be careful when you're being driven to solitary places. That doesn't mean that you should not spend time alone, that you, because you need that. You need time where you just get alone, you and the Lord, or just go for walks, and you know, it just needs your space. That's very, very important. That's good for your equilibrium. Nothing wrong with that. But when that's all you want to do, you don't want to be around no humans, you don't want no fellowship, don't want nobody around you, something's wrong. It's actually demonic in its nature and at its base, and you need to be careful about that. Again, nothing wrong with getting away. I'm just talking about that's all you want is solitary place. Get me away from folk. Something is wrong. All right? All right. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs were feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and the lake and were drowned. Now, let me touch on this, too, since I mentioned it last week, and we're going to have to repeat this over and over again. Evil spirits, they are disembodied spirits disembodied meaning they do not belong on earth the only people allowed on earth have to have a physical flesh and blood bone body and must come through the womb of a woman now you know why the word jesus had to become flesh through the womb of mary in order to have access to this earth you have to have a physical body that's why demons like to get inside people. If they can't get inside people, they will settle for animals. Now, you know why the Satan approached Eve as a serpent. See, you have to have a physical body to be in this earth. All right. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found a man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at the feet of Jesus. Please allow me to say this one more time. I mentioned it last week. I mentioned it on our radio broadcast and World Power Gospel Radio, and I'm going to say it again. When a person gets delivered, it is imperative, it is important, it is vital. Folks, it is absolutely necessary to make sure they sit at the feet of Jesus. See, as I mentioned last week, Matthew chapter 12 says, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, it goes into dry, arid, desert places seeking rest. What rest? They need another body. <laughs> That's the only way you can stay on the earth, see? That's why they told Jesus, if you cast us out, let us go into the pigs. Don't let us, don't send us to the abyss. No, we want to stay here on the earth. Can we go into the pigs? See, they need a body, see. And so they're seeking rest, but they find none. Matthew chapter 12, we read it last week. So they say, you know what? I'm going to go back to the body that I was in, the house I was in. You remember that? We went over that last week. Matthew chapter 12, let's start at verse 23 and read through there. And it says, when he comes back, he finds it swept and clean. In other words, Jesus cleaned them up. See? Got him washed in the blood of the Lamb. And the Bible says that demon goes and finds seven more spirits wicked than himself, and they enter into the man, and the last state is worse than the first. See? And that's because there's no word in there. See? This is why it's so important after you get delivered or healed or saved or anything from the Lord, solidify Fortify yourself with the word. Sit at the feet of Jesus. See, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, As newborn babies desire the milk of the word. In other words, you just got born again. Oh my God, you need a word. See, especially when you just got delivered off of drugs, 
alcohols, homosexuality, whatever it was. You got delivered in the morning. Baby, you need a word. Sit at the feet of Jesus. See? Spend time with him every day in the word, in prayer. Go to Bible study. Go to your Sunday service. You have to have that covering. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Did you get that? All right. He was dressed and in his right mind. Glory to God. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Or the King James Version says he was healed. He had to be healed. Because remember, mental illness, demon possession, mental illness, that's still a disease of the mind. Those demons possessed him and took over his mind, his body, everything. They had him cutting himself with stone. That had to be healed. See? So it wasn't just the casting out of the demons. He had to get the man back in his right mind. Then he had to heal his physical body. You think about people who are bound by drugs, particularly when you are bound by drugs for a long time. Like this man been possessed by these demons, the Bible says, a long time. And so when, you, when, you, when you're partaking of drugs, actually the word Drugs come from the Greek word sorcery or pharmakia. Go study it out for yourself. So when you're messing with drugs, you're messing with sorcery or pharmakia, pharmaceuticals, drugs, see. And you open up doors to these demon spirits, and when they come in, they bring everything with them. That's why you notice that when people are on drugs, they, they do crazy stuff. They kill people, very promiscuous, start killing. They'll do all kind of crazy stuff, and then they'll wake up and say, huh, what, I did what, what? See, <laughs> they open up the door, see. And when they've been doing that for a long time, it affects their mind. It affects their physical bodies. You ever notice people that are on drugs and stuff like that? It changes their body. Have you ever seen uh, the homosexual? Have you ever noticed that? How does their face turn so soft and begin to look like women? Though demons begin to take over. You, 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 you become a part of what you're partaking in. See? Very, very dangerous. And when you open up those doors, those demons begin to come on in. They tell you what to do and how to act. And you begin to think it's normal and it's okay. And this is the way we act. And this is the way it's always been. And, 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 and then when you get delivered, you still have to deal with a person's mindset. You remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world. You're going to have to stop being conformed the way you used to be and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or be, re be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, the garbage has to come out. And we have to input new information because you were contaminated while you were out there in the world. See? And the only way to do that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. You spend time with him. You feed upon his word. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, Jesus washes you with the water of the word. Have you ever read that before? Ephesians chapter 5, read it for yourself. He washes you with the water of the word so that there's no spot, no wrinkle, or any such thing. He's cleansing you. He's cleaning you up. Watch this. When the apostle Paul made that statement to the Ephesians, these people were already saved. And yet he told them, Jesus is washing you with the water of the word. The Romans were already saved. And yet Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, when it comes to the healing of your physical body. As I stated, when you're out there doing all this kind of stuff, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So it's not just him possessing you or wanting to take over your mind. He wants to take over your entire being. He wants your body. He wants you in a promiscuous lifestyle. He wants you to commit suicide. He wants you on drugs. He wants you to rape and kill and steal and destroy. That's the demon working in that person. And once that person gets born again, or delivered, or healed, see, he still has to fix that other stuff that's wrong with you, see? And so you have to go through this process. Now you know why Jesus said in the Gospel of John to those Jews that believed on him. Matter of fact, let's read that as we close. 
and we'll pick back up here next week because this is so important when it comes to healing and deliverance. Very, very important. Gospel of Luke chapter 8. And then you'll begin to understand why people will get delivered and then go right back into bondage or people will get healed and then be sick off the same thing again. That cancer will come back. That sickness will come back. You'll find out, and this is not a knock against anybody. This is just an observation so that we can help people. When you get people healed and delivered, get them on the word. I was at a uh, church. I go to Temple of Praise in Southeast D.C. And uh, uh, we prayed for uh, a man. This is several months ago. I don't remember all the details, and I won't talk about those anyway. But after prayer, I was walking a person back to his seat. I remember telling him, hey, 1 Peter 2.24. I give them scripture. Read those. Stick with them every day. Give them a word. Don't let them go back from you praying for them back to their seat or back home. And they have no word. The Bible said that spirit will come back. He's going to see it swept and cleansed. He's going to go get somebody more wicked than himself. He's going to bring it back on you. And, but if you have a word, you can ward him off. Notice this. Gospel of Mark, as we close, I have a minute here. Chapter, uh, pardon me, Gospel of John, chapter 8. Look at verse 30. 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching. Did you get that? I love this. This is an NIV translation. The King James says, If you continue in my word. So if you hold to the teaching, you are really my disciples. See, you're a student. In other words, you went to another level. See, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it's one thing to believe. It's another thing to keep on believing. It's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to stay saved. It's one thing to be delivered. It's another thing to stay delivered. It's one thing to be healed. It's another thing to stay healed. And the key is to continue in the word or sit at the feet of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We thank you for healing school today. Thank you for your word and all that we've learned. And we pray that you'd help us to be doers of that word. I pray that the people will go back and study these texts and read them, think about them, pray about them, meditate on them. Show them how to implement this, not only in their own lives, but to help other people as they're out there in ministry, dealing with people who are sick or bound by drugs or some type of addiction or perversion. They're going to need understanding. And I pray that you grant it to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast. I'm Dr. Garen Gatling. I'll be back again next week for another life changing word from God. Until then, you remember, if you're not living a life of love, you are simply not living it. I'll see you next week.